Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chu. Uh, so today I'm, I'm going to talk about the history and evolution of uh, percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Uh, the objectives that I'm uh, uh, going to go through um, during the uh, presentation outline the development and evolution in percutaneous axis and surgical techniques, uh, discuss different patient positioning uh, and compare prone versus supine BCNL, uh, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of uh, fluoroscopy versus ultrasound guided BERC axis, uh, mini PCNL versus standard PCNL, uh, stone removal and uh, lithotripsy using uh, different uh, lithotriptors, uh, pneumatic ultrasound or even laser, uh, exit uh, strategy, uh, whether tubes or uh, tubeless uh, PCNL. So when we talk about uh, history and evolution, uh, radiology would play a significant role in the development of uh, PCNL. Uh, do you hear me? So uh, radiology would play a significant role in the development of PCNL. Uh, widespread availability of fluoroscopy that was the key to uh, to the popularity that percutaneous nephrostomy uh, tube placement enjoys today. Uh, modern fluoros uh, fluoroscopy developed in 1950s. Um, in 1950s, again, the electrohydraulic shock wave uh, was invented. In 1955, Dr. Goodwin, while trying to perform a renal arteriogram, placed a needle into the collecting system of hydronephrotic kidney and performed first anti-grade nephrostogram. He left uh, a tube to drain the kidney, thereby placing the first nephrostomy tube. Uh, ultrasonic lithotripe uh, de developed in 1970. Um, uh, by 1976, uh, uh, Fernstrom and Johansson were the first to describe a technique for extracting renal calculi through a percutaneous nephrostomy under radiological control. And instruments used uh, to extract renal calculi at that time include the Dormia basket that was placed through a selector device used to help the aim and manipulate the basket once it was in the renal pelvis. Uh, Randall's uh, forceps uh, used under fluoroscopy for stone extraction. Uh, Kurth reported the first use of ultrasonic lithotrite for PCNL uh, uh, of staghorn calculus in 1977. Uh, in 1978, considered as the birth of endourology, uh, Arthur Smith would describe the first anti-grade stent placement when he uh, introduced a Gibbon stent through a percutaneous nephrostomy in patient with re-implanted ureter. Uh, Dr. Smith would coin uh, the term in urology to describe closed controlled manipulation of the geniturinary tract. His collaboration with Kurt uh, Amplatz, an interventional radiologist, would lead to numerous innovation that would further advance uh, PCNL. In 1983, uh, was uh, the year of the first World Congress of Percutaneous Renal Surgery, which was uh, interestingly organized by Dr. Wickham in London and uh, became the precursor to the World Congress of Endurology today. In 1984, the, uh, the second World Congress of uh, Percutaneous uh, Renal Surgery uh, in West Germany, more than 3,000 cases of PCNL were presented with a success rate exceeding 90%. This became one of the turning points where PCNL was deemed to be preferable alternative to open surgery. First, supine PCNL was described by, uh, uh, by uh, uh, Wickham in 1984, while, uh, uh, sorry, tubeless PCNL was described by Wickham and supine PCNL was described by Professor Valdivia in 87. And pneumatic lithotripsy was developed in uh, 1992. So uh, when it comes to the uh, indication for percutaneous nephrolithotomy, the American Urological Association strongly recommends PCNL approach as a first-line therapy in symptomatic patient with a total renal stone burden more than 20 millimeter because of two reasons, the higher stone free rate and less invasive technique when compared to open laparoscopic or rob robotic approach. The European Association of Urology also recommends PCNL as a first-line treatment in a patient with renal stone more than 20 millimeter, and it recommends it as, as an alternative for stone between 10 to 20 millimeter. 
when it comes to positioning uh, for PCNL, when PCNL was initially described uh, in 1976, the prone position was chosen because it was believed that this would be uh, the safest way to avoid damage to the colon and visceral organs. The technique was standardized over the following years as two-stage procedure. The first part uh, with the patient in supine uh, to give anesthesia and gain retrograde access. Then the patient is repositioned prone for the main part of the procedure. Uh, prone position uh, has several disadvantages. Uh, need more assistance to turn the patient after the patient is anesthetized. Risk of extubation when turning the patient. Risk of pulling out lines when turning the patient. If any uh, cardiopulmonary emergency occurred, rapid intervention uh, difficult or might be impossible. Uh, alteration in pulmonary ventilation uh, and decreased venous return. Uh, risk of uh, decubitus ulcers or pressure uh, on pressure uh, points, uh, even uh, increased risk of ophthalmological complications due to direct compression, might cause injury uh, to the orbit and corneal abrasions in um, very rare uh, reported cases, even uh, visual loss. So to overcome some of the limitations, several pos uh, positioning modification ha uh, has been proposed. The split leg uh, prone position, uh, which allows easier uh, simultaneous uh, percutaneous and transurethral access. Uh, the prone uh, flex uh, position, uh, after the patient is turned to uh, prone, uh, the table is flexed uh, 30 to 40 degree to open the space between the 12th rib and the posterior iliac crest. So more working space is created. As a result, the puncture can be more codily. However, this position uh, impairs even more the patient's respiration and circulation. Airway pressure are increased and the cardiac index uh, decreased. Uh, the lateral position uh, can, can be used in patients who couldn't tolerate uh, prone, such as patient uh, with morbid obesity. The main disadvantage in this pos uh, position is unusual fluoroscopic view of the kidney, which can uh, also be obscured by underlying spine. Maintaining the correct orientation and accurately puncturing the selected calyx is difficult, uh, especially using the uh, bullseye technique. So um, other alternatives such as using uh, ultrasound guided uh, axis or uh, triangulation technique instead. Uh, Pro Professor Valdivia described the supine position 25 years ago. However, uh, there was an astonishingly uh, small acceptance by urological uh, community until uh, April Luisa uh, described the Galdaco modified Valdivia supine position in 2007, which allowed uh, comfortable uh, simultaneous anti-grade and retrograde access to the whole urinary tract. Some of the advantages with the supine PCNL, the puncture is more uh, lateral away from the lumbar muscles. Uh, so movement of endoscopic instruments are less restricted. The direct of tract preserve low pressure and renal pelvis and even uh, allows more uh, spontaneous clearance and wash out, uh, wash out of fragments. Uh, low risk for, uh, of colonic uh, perforation comp compared to prone uh, PCNL. Um, again, disadvantages related to this position. Uh, the flank is not fully exposed, which makes access to the posti uh, posterior medially lying upper pool more difficult and provide less uh, availability for multiple accesses. The operating table and the patient's hip might also restrict the instrument's manipulation. Uh, the kidney uh, more mobile, which can uh, make puncture and uh, dilation of the tract more challenging. Uh, sometimes low intranial pressure leaves the collecting system less expanded and uh, therefore nephroscope manipulation can be more difficult. So can I ask you a question there? Um, the, the colonic, um, uh, the risk of colonic perforation is lower when it's in the uh, supine position? Uh, yeah, it has been uh, proposed that uh, low risk of colonic Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you would think that if you're lying supine, that your colon is going to basically drop down more and you might hit it. Whereas when you're prone, it sort of falls away anteriorly. But um, a lot of the, because that's, that's what you would think, but a lot of the studies do show that supine actually is better for that. It's very interesting. 
Yeah, this is why exactly like uh, the the first uh, initial uh, presumption that prone position uh, may m be more safer for the adjacent or, or organs, but like it turned to be like supine is more safer, especially for yeah. the uh, colonic perforation. Can I, can I ask a question on that point? Are there any confounders with use of ultrasound in supine uh, that might also make it safer? I mean, I, I think the physiology also makes sense with the with the colon maybe not being pushed. Uh, uh, because you're not lying right on, so it's not being pushed retrorenal. But I'm curious if, if maybe the ultrasound guidance is making a difference as well. Any comments on that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to talk about that um, uh, later when we compare the um, ultrasound versus uh, uh, fluoroscopy guided axis. Uh, ultrasound absolutely gives the advantage to avoid uh, and uh, decrease the risk of colonic perforation. Yeah, I would suspect most of those, Connor, are um, going to be x-ray guidance, I would say, rather than ultrasound, which we're tending to do here. Got it, thanks. Okay, uh, the same thing. Um, several uh, modifications have been uh, proposed. Um, uh, modified Valdivia uh, position. It was proposed initially to allow the use of rigid urethroscopy during PCNL. And then uh, Galdaco modified Valdivia position with slight lateralization of uh, uh, Valdivia supine uh, position allows more space for manipulating uh, in instruments. Uh, the part flank free uh, modified supine uh, position, the patient uh, is in supine with 15 uh, degree tilt of epsilateral flank made by using a sailing bag, as we can see in the picture uh, under the rib cage and gel pad under the pelvis. The epsilateral arm uh, lies across the chest and the legs are placed in lithotomy position with the epsilateral, uh, epsilateral leg relatively extended. Uh, this gives better exposure uh, of the flank than all other uh, supine positions for PCNL uh, and giving optimal space for renal access and manipulation. Um, it's always uh, has been an argument whether uh, prone position uh, influence the uh, ventilation uh, in this study, 101 uh, patients, all uh, prone PCNL, 51 non-OPs uh, versus uh, 50 OPs patient. Uh, the peak inspiratory pressure was measured one minute uh, prior to uh, prone positioning, one minute, uh, 5, 10, 20 uh, after positioning and at the end of the case. They found that the uh, peak inspiratory pressure was significantly higher in OPs patient, but uh, these levels never dangerously high, and there was no significant change in a peak inspiratory pressure from supine to prone position at any time point for either group. Uh, this uh, paper was published in 1996, investigated the effects of prone position on mechanical properties, compliance and res resistance of the total respiratory system, the lung, the chest wall, and the functional residual capacity, and gas exchange in 17 normal anesthetized uh, uh, people. Measurements were taken in supine position and after 20 minutes in prone position maintaining the same respiratory pattern. They concluded that the prone position during general anesthesia does not negatively uh, affect the respiratory mechanics and uh, improve lung volume and oxygen oxygenation. What about the tract uh, length? Uh, to determine the anatomical variation between the prone and, uh, versus supine versus supine oblique position uh, that are likely to affect the percutaneous renal axis, this study uh, uh, prospectively included 20 patients uh, for a total of 40 patients. 20 patients uh, underwent computer tomography in supine and prone position. The other 20 patients underwent supine uh, oblique versus prone uh, scans. And they found that the prone position is uh, associated with significantly shorter nephrostomy tract length and more potential access sites, which may improve uh, ease the uh, and safety of percutaneous renal access. Simply longer tract uh, can limit manipulation within uh, kidneys. Uh, what about the clinical outcomes? Which one is better? Uh, let's look at this uh, systematic review and meta-analysis, 15 RCTs and uh, 1,474 uh, patients included. They found that supine PCNL associated with significantly shorter operative time and post-operative fever compared to prone. Uh, stone free rate were compatible between the two groups. Uh, and 
they concluded supply and PCNL is a safe and efficient choice. Uh, again, uh, split leg modified la lateral position versus prone, prospective randomized uh, trial. Uh, they found the uh, mean total operative time was shorter in the uh, split leg modified lateral position, uh, while mean track formation was longer in that group. There was no significant difference in stone free rate, fluoroscopy time, and total complication. So to answer which is better, it depends. Prone may offer a simpler method for access unless choosing a combined approach, which is also can uh, uh, with some uh, modification uh, be possible. Uh, supine may be excellent technique to add uh, to your uh, like uh, skills in order to minimize a cardiopulmonary alteration that uh, that are more uh, common in prone. Urologists who perform DCNL should be familiar with uh, differences in uh, the positions and be able to use methods appropriate for each patient. Um, getting access uh, for PCNL. Historically, PCNL has been performed under fluoroscopic guidance, although the main disadvantage is re the radiation exposure. Occasionally, the visualization may be inadequate, and in some cases, contrast-induced nephropathy may occur. Hence, ultras ultrasound-guided access uh, of the desired calyx and drug dilation was developed theoretically to overcome these potential disadvantages. When we look at the literature uh, comparing the uh, both modalities uh, in terms of quality of access, a systematic review meta-analysis uh, by uh, Liu and colleagues uh, from China, they found a shorter puncture time and a higher success rate of first puncture with help of ultrasound. However, uh, other meta-analysis found no, no significant difference in uh, mean uh, access rate and success rate of puncture when comparing uh, both modalities. Uh, there might be, uh, for, for a Leo uh, study, uh, reflect uh, that the study was designed in China where ultrasound is uh, commonly used in many centers. So I would say it might be like equal between the uh, two modalities. Uh, when we talk about operative time, uh, several trials and three meta-analyses showed no significant difference in operative time between the two modalities. However, three uh, RCTs uh, showed a, sig uh, a significant lower procedure time, which is the time to um, uh, successful puncture in ultrasound uh, group uh, compared to a fluoroscopy guided access group, which give more uh, uh, favor to ultrasound. Uh, bleeding, again, uh, most of the study compared uh, the two modalities uh, showed no significant difference in uh, bleeding. Uh, colonic perforation is a uh, rare uh, complication. Most of reported cases in the literature were associated with uh, uh, fluoroscopic guided access. Uh, so this is actually one of the main advantages of ultrasound is to identify adjacent structures uh, during the uh, establishing axis. Uh, Anna Haas and his colleagues um, uh, retrospectively reviewed uh, 5,039 uh, patients who underwent standard uh, fluoroscopic guided uh, PCNL in single institution, and they found that uh, independent risk factors for colonic perforation were advanced age and the presence of horseshoe kidney. So this also gave a uh, favor for ultrasound uh, guided access to avoid colonic uh, perforation. Uh, in terms of uh, postoperative fever, there, uh, there was no significant difference between the, the uh, two modalities. Uh, radiation exposure is like one of the primary uh, consequences of fluoroscopy guided, uh, uh, guided uh, PCNL axis is the radiation uh, exposure. And uh, no worries, like as expected, significantly higher mean fluoroscopy time in uh, fluoroscopy guided access uh, compared to ultrasound. And a meta-analysis by uh, Wong and colleagues described that the X-ray exposure was 2.6 minutes longer for a uh, fluoroscopic guided axis group compared to ultrasound. Uh, just to clarify, for the uh, uh, for ultrasound group, for the people who are doing a combined uh, ultrasound and fluoroscopy guidance. Uh, the success rate of puncture and stone free rate, uh, no significant difference was found in success rate of puncture. Uh, between the two groups, the same thing with uh, stone free rate. So 
both approaches seem to be uh, safe and effective. The choice depends on the sur surgeon's expertise and particular technique, uh, along with the patient and stone uh, characteristics. Uh, we move to the uh, next objectives, uh, talking about the uh, size uh, of the axis uh, of the sheet. Uh, ever since PCNL was introduced, the basic concepts were uh, nephroscope, good visualization, method to fragment larger stones, and mechanical means to remove the fragments. But why uh, theory French? Uh, the concept was uh, to have uh, a larger enough channel to remove one centimeter stone fragments. Decision was uh, arbitrary at that time and no, uh, not evidence-based. But what have changed with time? Uh, the, uh, getting a better access, method and technologies to fragment a larger stones for sure. Uh, before talking about the uh, mini PCNL and the standard PCNL, we should de define that uh, standard PCNL is a PCNL uh, 24 to 30 French, mini uh, PCNL 14 to 22 French, ultra mini uh, 11 to uh, 13 uh, French, the size of the sheet. And even there is micro, which is 4.85 uh, French. Uh, when we talk about the mini PCNL, uh, we have to mention the uh, vacuum uh, uh, clearance effect, uh, the Venturi and uh, Pernoli uh, principle, uh, reduction in fluid pressure that results when fluid flow through a constructed section of a pipe, uh, at the same time increase in the speed of uh, fluid occurs uh, simultaneous, uh, simultaneously with a decrease in pressure. As we can see in, in, in real life practice, uh, the video showing uh, how the stone fragments uh, can follow the, the sheath, uh, by the way, of the mini PCNL is uh, uh, very mobile and uh, you can easily uh, uh, follow the stones. And you see here like uh, how easily the fragments uh, can uh, follow you all the way out uh, the, the sheath. I think that's a really underappreciated thing that this is a much smaller sheath. So we're able to manipulate it through the kidney much more easily than a 30 French sheep. Imagine putting basically a big dowel into a cake and trying to move it around. That's the 30 French versus like a small chopstick, which you can move around more easily. You're not cutting things obviously, but you're basically moving around. It's so much easier. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, does size matter? Uh, when we look at the literature uh, at, uh, comparing mini PCNL versus standard uh, PCNL, uh, this uh, systematic review and mean analysis aimed to evaluate the postoperative outcome of uh, mini PCNL versus standard PCNL. Uh, 20 clinical uh, trials, uh, 4,953 patients were included. Uh, Meta-analysis results showed no difference in stone-free rates between two modalities. Uh, patients in mini PCNL group experienced shorter hospital stay. Uh, less hemoglobin drop and less blood transfusion in uh, mini PCNL group. Uh, operative time was significantly longer in uh, mini PCNL group. Uh, no significant difference in post-operative pain and fever in the two groups. Uh, this is another systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, seven RCTs, uh, 1,407 uh, uh, mini PCNL patient, one, uh, 1,436 standard uh, PCNL. Uh, to summarize, uh, mini PCNL uh, versus a standard uh, 30 French PCNL uh, have a similar stone free rate. Uh, similar postoperative fever, shorter hospital stay, lower transfusion rate, longer uh, operative time in mini PCNL group. Uh, but when mini PCNL does, doesn't show a, a significant advantage uh, over the 24 uh, standard uh, PCNL, on the contrary, the procedure takes a longer uh, operative uh, time. Uh, when it comes to the cost, this uh, abstract was uh, presented at AOA 2020. Uh, uh, we can see the uh, direct cost uh, greater in uh, standard PCNL regardless of the uh, stone size. 
and they found that the many PCNL can uh, uh, can be uh, can offer cost saving even uh, for stone up to uh, forty millimeter. Uh, there is always concern about uh, using a smaller uh, sheath that can lead to an increase in pressure. But uh, does it matter? Uh, to examine the difference in intrarenal pressure, Dr. Uh, Mona, uh, Monash uh, and his group uh, instilled E. coli into the uh, porcelain renal pelvis through a retrograde axis for one hour. In the mini 14, 16 French uh, axis sheet uh, uh, was used and uh, in a standard 30 French uh, axis sheet. Uh, mini PCNL was associated with higher intrarenal pressure, as we can see. Uh, uh, all pigs had positive kidney tissue culture, whereas spleen culture were positive in 100% in mini group and 60% uh, in a standard group. Uh, ninety percent uh, had positive liver tissue culture in mini group versus thirty in uh, the standard. Blood culture were positive in thirty percent of pig in mini uh, arm compared to none uh, in the standard arm. But what about clinically? Uh, uh, again, we already mentioned in the uh, systematic reviews that. Um, Postoperative fever uh, showed no significant difference between the two modalities. Uh, here again, another systematic review and meta-analysis, doubts of getting fever were not significantly different when mini PCNL compared to uh, standard PCNL. Again, another uh, meta-analysis we just uh, mentioned uh, before, no uh, difference in postoperative uh, fever. But it gets better. A, a, a vacuum sheet, um, this issue of higher intrarenal pressure has been addressed by a Chinese company. They invented a clear petri sheet, a, a section sheet. The most distinct function is, um, is that the main working channel connected with negative pressure section device that could actively suck and, uh, out irrigation and stone fragments during lithotripsy procedure in the aim to keep a, a low renal pelvic pressure and facilitate stone extractions. Uh, this uh, randomized controlled trial by uh, Zong and uh, colleagues uh, compared mini PCNL versus mini PCNL with section sheet. So in terms of pressure, uh, renal pelvic pressure was significantly uh, lower in vacuum assisted sheet. And the time uh, renal uh, pelvic pressure spent uh, uh, over uh, 30 millimeter uh, of mercury was significantly even shorter uh, in vacuum assisted sheath group compared to the uh, regular mini PCNL. In terms of uh, uh, efficiency, uh, a shorter operative time and higher stone removal efficiency in vacuum assisted sheath group uh, were found. Interestingly, mini PCNL is not in the uh, EOA guideline. So we move to the um, uh, stone removal and uh, lethal uh, uh, tripsy. Uh, we, we mentioned some of the uh, innovations and uh, inventions uh, uh, during the history uh, slides, uh, the ultrasonic lithium uh, tractor uh, was uh, first described in uh, 77, pneumatic lithium trips in 1990s. Uh, now we have plenty of uh, different uh, devices and technologies to uh, fragment the stones. Uh, the pneumatic uh, plastic uh, probes, uh, high pressure uh, CO2 cartridge, uh, need uh, direct contact. Uh, giving a uh, jackhammer effect. Uh, it has a three, uh, six French probes, uh, cordless and portable. Uh, but this model specifically is, is no longer um, available. Uh, ultrasonic uh, probe. Does anyone remember the stone breaker? It was like for really hard stones. This thing was amazing. Um, it's too bad. They, the, the FDA came up with something where they couldn't sterilize like one little part on the inside properly, so they had to pull it from the market. But this thing really was uh, quite amazing. The old lithic, the old, um, the old lithic class delivered about six bars of pressure. This does, this delivered like thirty something. It was and it was safe on tissue too. It was quite amazing. It's, it's too bad it's gone. Thank you. 
So um, ultrasonic probes, uh, piezoelectrically generated ultrasound waves. Uh, one of the um, advantages that has channel for continuous uh, section, uh, 2.5 to 5 French uh, probes, and then a uh, combination probe that uh, has both pneumatic and ultrasonic. Uh, it's called uh, Trilogy from Lithoclast. It has uh, dual energy, as I mentioned, using electromagnetic and ultrasonic energy. Uh, it has adjustable power and frequency. Uh, probe size range from 1.1 millimeter to 3.9, and also has a channel for continuous uh, section. Uh, lasers, we already uh, talked about the laser in the last uh, grand round, but it's like Holmium uh, YAG laser is uh, the gold uh, standard laser in uh, lithotripsy. Uh, when we talk about Holmium, we should mention the uh, pulse modulation uh, technology, namely uh, Moses technology. Uh, they modulated one pulse to have two uh, subpulses, each with different peak power. Uh, a short low energy uh, initiation pulse would generate a vapor bubble, followed by a longer, more energetic and full strength pulse uh, after the full expansion of the vapor bubble. Uh, one of the uh, main uh, features that uh, decrease uh, in fragmentation dusting time and uh, markedly decrease in retropulsion. And then the uh, new player, uh, the thulium uh, fiber laser, uh, which has uh, totally different uh, physical characteristics. Uh, we talked about that uh, previously. Uh, one of the... Um, um, main uh, advantage is the uh, less uh, tissue penetration depth, uh, which even means more and higher uh, safety. Um, um, this study compared the pneumatic ultrasonic uh, and the combination probe that has both uh, uh, technologies. And uh, the combined ultrasonic pneumatic probe uh, disintegrates stone faster and uh, this shortened total operative time, uh, there, therefore stone clearance uh, was faster in the group uh, where uh, combination uh, technology were used. Uh, this um, uh, randomized control trial at nine uh, North American uh, centers, including uh, UPC, uh, patient were randomized to one of the uh, three uh, lithotriptor device. Uh, either the Cyper one, the ultrasonic combination, uh, the pneumatic ultrasonic uh, from lithoclast, or the pneumatic the stone breaker. Dr. Chu just mentioned that. They conclude that uh, all three modalities have similar adjusted stone clearance rate in PCNL for stone more than two centimeter. Uh, the safety and efficacy of these devices are uh, compatible. Uh, uh, last objectives is uh, tubes versus tubeless uh, PCNL. What, why, how, and when? Uh, first, we have to define the tubeless PCNL. It's the performance of PCNL without leaving a large poor nephrostomy tube. Why? The tubeless technique was first uh, pioneered by uh, Gary Bellman and uh, colleagues in effort to assess if the pain, morbidity, hospital stay, and overall recovery for PCNL uh, could be reduced. Uh, in the uh, initial uh, report, 30 patients uh, had double gestant and council nephrostomy tube uh, were placed at the end of the procedure. The cancer catheter was removed uh, two to three hours uh, postoperatively, uh, while in the subsequent 20 patients received only a double gestant with no cancer catheter. And this group was compared with uh, another 50 uh, uh, patients uh, who underwent a, a normal uh, or regular PCNL with a nephrostomy tube. And uh, noting a significant reduction in hospital stay, pain, return to normal activity, and cost in a patient with a tubeless PCNL. So more studies were published with modification of technique, uh, including a exteriorized ureteral catheter, uh, fibrin glue uh, of the tract, a gelatin matrix uh, hemostatic uh, sealant, the flow seal, all showed uh, feasibility and uh, outcome uh, success. Uh, even uh, some uh, prospective randomized trial that suggested use of fibrin uh, and flow seal uh, hemostatic gel may not require. 
this is a systematic review and mean analysis. Uh, 14 RCTs, uh, 1,148 uh, patients were included. Uh, the mean analysis concluded that uh, two plus PCNL uh, resulted in shorter hospital stay, uh, shorter return to normal activity, lower postoperative pain score, less analgesia, and even reduce urinary leakage. Uh, several prospective randomized trials confirm uh, definite benefit, benefits to uh, patients with uh, respect to pain, hospital stay, and return to normal activity, uh, as do even uh, more, uh, more meta-analysis confirm the same finding. Uh, how uh, there have been numerous modification of the technique of the tubeless BCNL, including the use of externalized ureteral uh, stent or catheter, internal stent, and even no stent at all, so it's totally tubeless. Uh, further hemostatic agents may or may not be used. There are uh, theoretical benefits, but these have not fully been re uh, realized in the uh, studies uh, to date. When can be considered nearly, uh, nearly in all PCNLs uh, as a candidate for uh, tubeless PCNL? Uh, it has been described even in uh, supracostal, which is pre preferred to prevent any uh, uh, urinary leakage around, any uh, pleural effusion, uh, pneumothorax, uh, and even described in bilateral uh, PCNL and uh, solitary kidney. But the most important question is when uh, not to um, uh, do a tubeless PCNL. So in case of significant bleeding uh, that may require transfusion, when second look uh, required or expected, uh, significant bleeding after uh, temporary nephrostomy withdrawn and if you don't feel comfortable. So, uh, to conclude, uh, we, we, we talked about different techniques, different uh, modalities. Each percutaneous technique has advantages and disadvantages, and no single technique is ideal in all circumstances. Uh, it is perhaps advantageous to know these techniques and determine the best approach that is tailored to uh, individual patients. One size uh, fits all is, is no longer uh, applicable uh, in medicine. And instead, one size doesn't uh, fit all. So if we look at uh, uh, this uh, CT scan, when we talk about mini uh, BCNL versus standard, which approach would you choose uh, for the stone on the left versus the stone on the right? So one size. Uh, oh, good morning. I'm going from the stone center. Uh, so mini purchase like um, using like little scissors to, to cut some grass around the yeah. edge of your building. Yeah, Whereas, you know, standard perk is like a riding lawnmower. Yeah, like you're sure. going to be able to go through a lot more. Um, you know, so I, I think that's crazy to do mini perk on the left side. However, having said that, when I've been visiting China, um, I've seen full staghorn calculi take, taken care of with mini perk in two and a half hours as well too. So it's really, um, I think it's how good you are and how comfortable you are. I think mini perk is just a lot more advanced in, um, or it's been used a lot more in Asia and Europe than we have here in North America. So people now, you know, before we sort of say 15 millimeters, maybe up to 20 millimeters. I don't know what Ryan and Connor have as their limit, but um, I can tell you that in other places it's up to three, four, sometimes even full stags, depending on how comfortable you are with things. Um, the same thing uh, when we look at this patient, uh, when we talk about subine versus uh, prone. So uh, one size doesn't fit all. Uh, you, should, you should be familiar with all the uh, uh, available uh, positions, all the available uh, resources uh, in the hospital, and uh, which position that fit uh, this patient or that. And uh, the same thing when we talk about the ultrasound guided axis versus fluoroscopic guided axis. Uh, when, when you see the uh, very uh, nice dilated uh, system uh, versus a very uh, compressed uh, non-hydronephrotic system. Uh, and when you see a CD image of a um, uh, retro, uh, retro renal colon, would you be confident to do um, a fluoroscopic uh, guided axis without any 
uh, ultrasound assistance. Uh, so uh, again, you have to know um, or available uh, modalities, all the um, uh, limitations um, and um, the patient's factor and the stone factors as well. Thank you.